If I am being honest, this video is kind of a cheat. When I originally started this channel over a year ago now, there was a lot I did not understand about the video making process, esoteric things like basic video and sound editing. And I like to think I have improved somewhat. In acknowledgement of achieving basic competency, I have decided to revisit the first video I ever made because as it exists now, it's not even a glorified slideshow. I think the content itself deserves a better visual treatment, so pardon my self-indulgence. Of the entire span of the Steven Universe media franchise, two episodes in particular have always stood out to me. Season 1, Episode 16, Steven the Swordfighter, and Season 2, Episode 5, Sworn to the Sword. Shocking, right? What I find so fascinating about these episodes is that between them, they provide an interesting treatment of the practical and ideological basis upon which the pedagogies of sword arts are themselves built, which is no small feat for a cartoon. The two episodes create an interesting balance between monotony and disappointment on the one hand, and the rewards of consistency and dedication on the other. Stephen the Swordfighter presents Stephen's initial enthusiasm at the very idea of learning how to use a sword withering away after learning he will be instructed in things like how to properly take a stance. This is juxtaposed with the images presented by the media he consumes, that his primary basis for even wanting to pursue the study of sword arts was built upon a fictionalized representation is perfectly in keeping with how this works in the real world. Contrast this with the experience that Connie has. While built upon the same practical foundation Stephen was presented with, Hers is one of self-mastery and personal growth, which is of course experienced as montage. In this way, the series manages to represent two terminal points in the study of martial arts, abandonment and retention. But there is more at play here worth considering. Sworn to the Sword frames Connie's development into a proficient sword fighter through instruction as indoctrination. Whereas Steven's exuberance is predicated upon a love of anime, which is ultimately too shallow to provide a sufficient ideological basis upon which to push through the tedium. Pearl explains, through song no less, the history of her own past of overcoming the role she was predestined to hold, to discover her true nature as a soldier in the service of Rose Quartz. She was able to achieve this, in no small part, by adopting and internalizing historic notions of what it meant to be a warrior. Connie too adopts this mindset, but this places her in unnecessary danger because Stephen eventually learns the truth. Why won't you just let me do this for you, Rose? It's all lies. Taking up the blade because of some historically constructed ideology is, at the end of the day, no different than doing so because of the influence of hyperbolic media. This is largely the point. Each episode also provides some piercing clarity about the true nature of the Crystal Gems and their own conflict-ridden past. Episode 15 is the first time Steven, and therefore the audience, witnesses a gem getting poofed, as Pearl is ambushed by her own holographic training simulation. Episode 5, on the other hand, explores Pearl's romanticized memories of her own past and how her obsession with serving Rose simply reified her homeworld manufactured role. The abnegation inherent as a servant is little changed because you happen to be holding a sword. Taking this exploration of the ideological framework as wholesale condemnation would be, however, a mistake. It is ultimately through enacting the lessons they have learned through Pearl's instruction that the characters are able to resolve the conflict of each episode. Steven uses the fundamentals Pearl has taught him to defeat her rogue hologram, even if the result is he never again takes up the sword. Connie, for her part, realizes that she does not have to become servile to Steven in order to protect him, and both their combat proficiency and bond is made stronger for it, overcoming a hurdle Pearl herself was never able to. Confronting these illusions, the lies people tell themselves, is a thematic current that runs straight through the entirety of the series and is so deftly interwoven into these interesting but seemingly standalone episodes that one cannot help but marvel at the coherence and commitment to theme. The martial arts, and those who practice them, are not immune from these mythologized self-images. 
even a cursor examination of both popular perspective, as well as the growing body of work being produced by martial arts studies, is quite revealing. I think that the great strength of these episodes as meditations on the nature of sword arts is that they'd so deftly weave together their own narrative-driven themes with wider considerations about the ways that people contemplate a martial reality which they will never likely experience for themselves. They will only experience it mediated through the representation provided by visual media. Of course, this can be taken a degree too far, a lesson made clear in these episodes. From the perspective of cultural studies, though, this relationship is worth interrogating. I believe engaging with the treatment of sword arts in a wide assortment of media and analyzing how this influences the way general audiences learn about and experience these practices can provide greater insight into the function of swords as cultural heritage and martial arts as embodied knowledge in the current age. Thanks for your time.